Hey guys, a while ago I posted a questionnaire on my Instagram about what tutorial you want to see from me and it turns out a lot of you are curious about how to render hair so we are going to do exactly that today and for today's video I will be collaborating with Clip Studio Paint just to give a little bit of an introduction Clip Studio Paint is one of the most popular digital drawing software and I personally have used CSP on all my works for over 5 years now. CSP is also known to be very versatile as you can use it for illustrations, comics, and even 2D animation. CSP is accessible on PC, iPad, and Android. And they offer free trial for up to 3 months. So if you'd like to try out all of my tips from this video, you definitely can. Just check out the description below. So today, I'll be walking you through my ways of coloring or rendering hair. Most of what I'll be talking about are basics that you can utilize across any digital art programs, but I will also be sharing some Clip Studio Paint functions that may help your process. To begin, I have prepared two hair models that you can download for free on the link in the description. Alternatively, if you want to draw your own hair base, you can also use the Clip Studio Paint 3D models as a base by clicking on the Materials tab, which is the little arrow on the upper right hand side. Or, it might look like this if you're on iPad. Then, click on 3D Body Type and click on 3D Drawing Figure and drag it onto your canvas. Click on this icon to zoom in or out and drag on this first icon to rotate it around until it fits your needs. So going back to our pre-made base, we are going to start with this one. First, let's put a base color on the hair using the paint bucket tool. Then, to clean up the white spaces here, there's a handy tool I like to use, which is this pink tool. What it does is basically, it's a fill tool but in the form of a lasso tool. To use it, first, you want to find the layer where the line art is, and click on this little lighthouse icon that says, set as reference layer. Now go back to your color layer and carefully lasso around the lines of the hair. I'll link all the assets I use below so that you can find it too. Sometimes these tools aren't perfectly neat so I tidy it up manually. When coloring hair, it's important to set the 1, the overall setting or surroundings, and 2, the direction of the lighting, which for our model is set to a sunny day, with the main light being the sunlight from the top of the head. First, the surroundings. If the surrounding sky is blue, the shadow will lean more towards blue. This is called the ambient light, where the color of the shadow is influenced by the color of its surroundings. Second, the direction of the lighting. Since our lighting comes from the top of the head, for now, let's start by airbrushing the light here. And to contrast the blue ambient color, I'm setting a light warm orange color as the sunlight. This is called the main or direct light, which is the strongest light source in a setting. When you look at the ball and give it light, you'll notice that there's often a spot of bright light like this. This is called the highlights. 
where an object reflects light from the light source to your eyes. To paint the highlights, please keep note that the hair on the head isn't shaped like a flat ball. If you touch the top of your head, you'll notice that your hair has some volume. So a small part of your hair near the roots goes up and then the rest goes down following the gravity. So I would say think of something that's more of a donut shape where the highlight goes like this. If you color highlights on straight hair, I would advise to try and retain the shape of the donut highlight as much as you can, at least for the main highlight, so that the overall form of the hair stays readable as one single object, instead of, let's say, having separate strong highlights like this, it would be too much for the eyes to read at once. Now that the rough shapes of the highlights are set, let's proceed with the shading. Since our ambient color is blue, I will direct the shading color to the direction of the blue in the color wheel. For this, I'm using a custom-made CSP brush named Square Texture Brush, which I will link in the description below. Right now, what I'm doing is trying to determine the rough look and colors of the shading, so we are not rendering yet. Even when I'm just laying down colors, you see that I prefer to brush one by one in the direction of the hair, instead of just brushing over it as if I'm shading a ball. I think this makes it a lot easier later on to get the texture of the hair when rendering. Remember following the donut highlight, there will also be some shading here, on the top of the head. Next, this is more of a personal preference instead of lighting tips, but I personally like to color the back of the hair brighter. This, in my opinion, makes the character's face look more radiant, and it helps to separate the layers of the hair in the front versus the back. I'll add a bit more blue tints to the hair following the blue ambient light. I picked a blue color from the sky, brushed it onto the hair lightly so that the blue mixes a little with the brown color of the hair, and then Repeat until you get a super toned down blue. Remember that ambient light, bounce light, and any other light that doesn't come from the main light should not be brighter than the main light, which in our case is this highlight at the top. Anyway, the main highlight is indeed a little too bright here, so I'm going to tone it down while still keeping it brighter than the other lights. And then, to make the highlights color richer, you can brush in a bit of bright orange to the rims of the highlights. Now that the rough color graph is set, I'll go ahead and render above all the layers. I'm also using a custom Photoshop brush that I imported through CSP. Since CSP is compatible with ABR, all you have to do is drag the ABR file from your folder into your brush panel on the left side of the screen. My blending process involves a lot of color picking. I would brush lightly, pick a color at the edge where my shading mixes a little with the base colors and then brush that new color over. 
This way you will be able to retain so much more of the texture in the hair than if you are using a blend or blur tool. If I were to use a blur tool, it would like it would just flat out blend all my colors smoothly, which is not something I want when rendering hair. So for hair, I try to retain as much hair texture as possible by brushing stroke by stroke. I have been a beginner in digital art too, and back then I had this urge to just blend everything smoothly and perfectly because I didn't have the skill to build a texture that I was satisfied with. Even now, not gonna lie, it's still difficult for me to build a texture that looks realistic. But as I grew more, I think it's okay to leave some imperfections here and there, leave some strands of hair rough and unblended. I think these imperfections are what makes our work special, and additionally, it adds a handcrafted feel into your painting. TSP has many textured painting brushes in the asset store, and I think that's a good place to start if you want to look for a brush that you are comfortable with. Lastly, I like to add stray hair pieces to the hair to make it look more natural. If the hair that you're working on is bright colored, you can go to the left side of the CSP window and click on Layer Property Border Effect. Then, click on this white box and change the color to a color that's slightly darker than the hair. With this, when you brush the stray hair pieces, it's going to automatically make the line art for you. I think this is a really simple but handy trick that you can do to make your hair look more detailed. Now, this is decent by itself, but I'll show you how I add more volume to the hair. Remember this sphere that I made? Basically, you want to make it as if there are strips of paper coming out of the center of the head. And then, they go down following the round shape of the head. Then, below the paper strips, there will be triangular shaped shadows. Let's try it out on our actual model here. And then last, I make a new add glow layer and brush some reddish orange to the top and a bit more blue from the ambient on the lower parts to lighten the hair. Oh, this one is not exactly about hair rendering, but I do have another tip that can definitely step up your drawing. If you have top lighting like this, the hair will cast some shadow onto the shoulders. You can make this by creating a new multiply layer on top of the shoulders and brush in hair silhouettes like this. If you want to make your paintings look more realistic, 
I think it's a good idea to practice putting more attention to details like this. Now that we're finished with the first example, let's try rendering the next hair model. For this one, I'll color the hair in a nighttime setting with lighting from the side. To save time, I've laid down the base colors with the method that I did in the first model. But this brown color looks a bit too bright considering the dark surroundings, right? So what I will do is to make a new multiply layer and select the brighter part of the blue color from the surroundings. Then, clip and fill the layer with that blue color, and then lower the opacity until it looks blended. Next, I continue by placing the direct light that falls on the hair. Of course, it's entirely possible for a night scene to have a warm lighting, but for this one, since we did the warm lighting on the previous one already, I'll try to use a blue toned light. When placing the right light, please be mindful of the contours of the hair. Since the hair is styled in a braid, the surface of the hair is not flat, and you have to be mindful of that to create a convincing lighting. For the bottom part of the hair, since the light is blocked by the shoulder, the direct light would not be visible in that area. Now that I'm done with the direct light, let's start shading the hair and give it some form. Since the ambient color is blue, I'll shift the shading color a little colder to match the ambience. Since the main light comes from below, the highlight would be positioned lower and curved downwards. Since this highlight is not the main light, please be careful to not make this highlight brighter than this direct light. I'll add a bit more blue ambient light on the edges of the hair. I prefer brushing the highlights of the hair manually since it helps me control the lighting more. But if you really need to save time, like for example you're doing a webtoon, there's actually some ready-made hair highlight brushes that some users uploaded. Using this, you can make hair highlights in one stroke. It's pretty cool, right? Now, I'm going to paint over like we did in the previous hair model. Back in the day, I used to rely on line art a lot. But as I drew more, I found line art to be a bit restrictive, especially when drawing hair. So that's why you'll find me painting over my drawings a lot. But you don't have to force yourself to paint. I believe everyone has a different workflow that they feel comfortable with, and this is just the one that works best for me. This is also more of a personal preference, but I tend to paint over the dark lines on the parts of the hair that get direct exposure to the light. I believe this makes the impression of light stronger. As a finishing, I'll add some drama to the light by adding a blue add glow layer on top. And add some stray hair pieces like we did last time. You can add a bright colored stray hair on the part of the hair that gets direct exposure to the light. And we're done with today's tutorial. What do you think? If you want to practice and apply what we learned today, you can download the two hair models that I use in this video for free on the link in the description. 
Additionally, if you think today's video is helpful and want to support me, you can also get the original finished file with all the layers to study for only one dollar. Lastly, I would like to say thank you again to CSP for sponsoring this video today. Please check out my channel for my previous collaboration with CSP, where I explained my entire process of making digital art. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I hope you find this video helpful, and I'll see you again next time.